So I'm just checking my battery conditions here. We are still on 38.7 ampere hours. I haven't had a loss for a week now. And I just want to check the actual kilometer. So the last drop was at 180 and we've got 406 now. That's 226. So 226 kilometers, 226 kilometers um, ago, the last drop occurred. So I'm expecting the next drop will occur today. <laughs> Watch this space. And good, good morning everyone, welcome back to another episode, Unplug TV. So as I told you yesterday, I was expecting a drop in state of health of the battery again. Because it has been a while and we have driven quite some kilometers. And yesterday we have been to Ipswich, so we did a little bit of a hybrid drive. I can show you here, that was yesterday's trip here. Look at this, 122 kilometers. 1.5 kilometers elevation up and down sportive driving style sure um, and we have used only 3.9 liters per hundred kilometers one full initial charge how efficient is this car unbelievable you won't find any other car on the market apart from a pure electric car of course which can match this fuel economy one initial charge only 3.9 liters 100 kilometers that is amazing uh, anyway this morning i turned on the dog and what we can see it is still on 38.7 ampere hours no further loss yet battery condition so the last loss was on the 21st and we have the 28th now seven days ago 180 108 330 uh, kilometers around 330 kilometers seven eight days no further drop yet has it stabilized yes yeah, so this morning i could not fully charge the car there was not enough time I started the charge at midnight, um, yeah, 12 a.m. and it was still going, seven hours, 40 minutes and the charge, and the charging process was still not finished this morning. So we are starting the day with 96.1%, uh, but I don't have any further appointments this afternoon. So I won't need the full capacity anyway. And look at this beautiful morning here. After a good hybrid drive, 61 kilometers on the gasometer. And it's very interesting to read on the forums, in the public, on social media, that uh, some people have the perception that they think the car is actually designed to lose capacity over time when you do a lot of electric driving. And this is on purpose to protect the battery. They are under the impression it is a hybrid car and you should drive it as a hybrid car. And only then the state of health will not go down as fast as we see it in our cars, in most of the cars worldwide. 
almost all of the cars. And I know where this comes from because we have seen this um, for quite a while now. When cars have not been charged at all in their first life, so they have been driven like normal hybrid cars, they haven't been charged, they haven't been plugged in, and the battery only moves between 25 and 35 percent all of the time. And this for the first two or three years of the car's life, of the battery's life. So this pure hybrid driving obviously keeps the battery very healthy, of course, because we are using almost no capacity of it. But the main thing is it also keeps the software very happy. And this is exactly what we know from cars which have not been charged much. The, the actual state of health seems to be more stable from a pure software perspective. Once the car gets plugged in and gets used as an electric vehicle more often, the state of health goes down fairly quickly due to the software problem we all see. But these guys, they think this is on purpose. This is exactly to protect the battery from too much electric vehicle driving. And you should use the car as a hybrid car and then the state of health does not go down. Well, I think this would defeat the whole purpose of this car completely because it's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It is called electric vehicle. They are hybrids, they are plug-in hybrids and they are plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. If this would be the purpose of the Outlander PHEV, they would have called it plug-in hybrid Outlander, not plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. The priority of driving this car is definitely 100% focused on electric driving. This has a high priority over all other driving modes. It always drives an electric first as much as possible to be as efficient as possible. Fuel price 145.9. Yeah, I'm not filling up. I'm not I'm not playing this game. So I think this is an electric vehicle. It is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and it's supposed to be driven as an electric vehicle. Absolutely. Otherwise it would be a plug-in hybrid Outlander. So I understand they are thinking, I understand where they are coming from. They are, they are saying if you drive as a hybrid, the state of health will be stable. If you drive it as an EV, it will go down quickly, which is normal for batteries. Um, well, I, I know what they mean, I know where they are coming from, but I don't think this is the purpose of this car. If this would be the purpose, the advertising would be totally wrong because the vehicle is clearly is clearly advertised as an electric vehicle. Yeah, so guys, I would be interested in your opinion about this. So, how how do you um, what what do you think? Is this a hybrid electric vehicle or is it a, just a plug-in hybrid as a normal as all the other plug-in hybrids out there. Uh, let, let me know what you think in the um, comments down below. And do you think we should drive this car as a hybrid? And if so, how do we do that? How do I drive this one as a hybrid? Um, should I not charge the car anymore? Um, then it drives as a hybrid? Well, if I charge my car overnight and drive to work, I cannot drive anything else than electric. There's no way for me to drive this car as a hybrid car unless I press the save or charge button and start the engine on purpose. But as I said, this would defeat the whole purpose of the car, right? So I would like to hear from you guys, what do you think about this whole hybrid, plug-in hybrid, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle situation? And I'm looking forward to um, reading from you. I 
I'm just reading this interesting question from uh, Martin 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 Hilberger Hilberg. Very interesting. Hello, Andy. Here's the proof that the watchdog shows nonsense. Have you ever changed the state of health and state of change state of charge display from ampere hours to kilowatt hours? Here you will find that despite the low ampere hours values, still fit 13.8 kilowatt hours in the battery 2019 model. The state of charge surpasses the state of health in kilowatt hour even with low ampere hour values. I have responded already to this comment and of course this is not true Martin. The kilowatt hours are fooling you. So whenever your battery is full at 4.1 volts it will show far more kilowatt hours than if the battery is empty. And that's why the BMU internally don't calculate with kilowatt hours. That would be insane. Ampere hours are far more accurate and don't change with the voltage. They are constant. So changing the PHEV watchdog from ampere hours to kilowatt hours is just, it's more like a gimmick. It's not really usable because it highly depends on your voltage. Oh. Fire brigade. And here I took uh, two screenshots of the PHEV watchdog showing the battery um, halfway full at about 50% state of charge and the other one is at 90% state of charge and you can see the capacity is both 11.6 kilowatt hours which is 38.6 ampere hours. And this is the constant voltage the dog uses to calculate this kilowatt hours here for the capacity. It always uses the um, nominal voltage of 3.75 volts per cell to calculate the kilowatt hours. While for the state of charge, so the actual fill grade of the battery, it uses the actual um, voltage which is currently available. And therefore it calculates already 11.4 kilowatt hours while it is on 91% state of charge. So almost the same capacity as the state of health, but of course it uses the higher voltage and that's why the kilowatt hours are obviously higher than the actual capacity available in the battery. So you can see the kilowatt hours are highly dependent on the voltage of the battery and it is, it is just not accurate to measure in kilowatt hours. Ampere hours are the way to go. So if your battery is fully charged at 4.1 volts, you will exceed 15 kilowatt hours in theory, of course, only. You still have 46 ampere hours, but the voltage is higher. So are your kilowatt hours. If your battery is empty at 3.6 volt, you will get only 13.2 kilowatt hours out of the battery, of course, because the voltage is lower. So yes, you can change the you can change the figures in the PHEV watchdog from ampere hours to kilowatt hours, but you have to have a look at your voltage as well. So to measure the capacity of a battery in ampere hours just makes sense because the ampere hours will not be dependent on any load or any current or any voltage in your system at all. They always be constant and independent of all these other parameters. So the kilowatt hours displayed on the PHEV watchdog could go far, far above the specifications or could be far below the specifications. So please use the ampere hours if you want to measure correctly. But uh, um, thanks for your comment, Martin. I had several emails being sent to me asking for an update on the Mitsubishi situation here in Australia. I will uh, just do this quickly. There is no update. Now, seriously, I have not heard back a single word for the last three weeks. From Mitsubishi Australia here, I'm not sure what is going on. Maybe they have moved, maybe they have closed down, maybe they have just shut down the business down there. I have no idea. So we are still having the deadline until end of this week, until end of May. Um, I'm not sure if Mitsubishi still watches my videos, otherwise this would be a reminder to them that we have only three days left now. And I have not heard back of any further 
commitment, any further progress, any new steps they want to do with the car. Nothing. Zero. Nada. Null. So I don't know what will happen next week. The deadline runs out Friday afternoon 5 p.m. And well, so I should have an email by end of Friday from them with a solution for this car and hopefully for everyone else. Or at least with a direction how to move forward from this situation now. And what we are going to do if they don't respond until Friday, I will let you know in one of my future videos, of course. All right, guys, so far this little update from today. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplug TV, Australia, signing off. You stay charged and we will see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs> what did I tell you? I was expecting it every, every second. And now on my way back home, finally, finally, <laughs> the expectations have been met. 38.6, another 0 0.1 ampere hour down. So seven days and 240 kilometers, another 0 0.1 ampere hour down. Well, I tell you, the car does not disappoint in any perspective. See you soon. <laughs>